Good morning, everybody. My name is Cole Evans. I'm the CEO of Enduro Metals. Um, this morning, I'm going to quickly cover with you guys our latest press release on uh, drilling results and, and surface results, uh, more surface results, um, along the McClymont Fault. So there's a lot to unpack from this press release. This one's taken us a really long time to one, get all the results, compile everything, and, and most importantly, and the most difficult part of that all, is figuring out the geological uh, story, uh, so to speak. So getting right into it, drill results intersect at 151 meters, 0.73 gold equivalent, starting at 124 meters. This is a uh, step out along this northeastern extension um, that we've that we've drilled before, and it's again showing the the reproducibility, uh, the reproducibility, the, the similarity, I guess is a better way to put it, of the results that we've been seeing further to the southwest, and showing that hey, look at there is a large bulk tonnage style gold system going on here with some you know pr some reproducible and predictable higher grade horizons like uh, we can see in this section but really out, you know outside of that I think if I could emphasize one point about this press release it's size and scale and the most significant thing to me and, and intensity for that matter the most significant thing to me is this what you see right here the 700 meters to 5500 meters now that's a that's a huge increase obviously that's a big statement so how do we go about saying that I'll we'll cut straight to the first figure here a plan view of, of the McClymont fault area generally speaking so you can see outlined the historic mineral estimate from the 1980s. Uh, again, that's that is a, um, a not a resource that you don't know, want to emphasize that that is not a resource we've done. This is just based on 1980s drilling. You know, $475 an ounce gold cutoff grade of. of um, two grams per ton and so on and so forth but encourage you to read um, Romeo's technical report when they did that in, in, in 2007 compiling compiling those numbers but the point being they got 232,000 ounces at, at just over five grams in that area so what have we done well we've been moving out along the northeast extension for the, for those of you that have been following along and for those of you who are new of it what or, or to new, new to this um, we've been moving out along the northeast extension and expanding on on those results and showing its size scale as well as drilling that's shown that hey there's significantly uh, more gold within this historic area where you know in a just a matter of the times um, where all the drill core w was an acid but now and this is where it's really changed our understanding of this whole thing is we can look it over here and this anomaly will look more in tense because you see more pink dots all clustered in together that's a relic of the fact that the sampling grid is much tighter over here right you can see the and you can see that in the the samples that didn't um you know, didn't have any, any um, gold anomalous, or wasn't anomalous for gold uh, in the grid here. You can see it's quite tight. Where over here, it's much more spaced out. It's a much larger area that we were testing for the first time. So you do wider spacing. And you can see, so as we move to the southwest, there's a clear winner here now. And for those of you that um, know this project from or been following this project for a few years and getting back to actually when I first started getting involved investing in the project in 2019 there was an area over here that was talked about Arsino um, that named after the Arsino pyrite that's you know typical of gold that was found on surface in there at the time and you can see the trace there's a couple drill holes uh, that were put over there that had the right look to them but they didn't work out there wasn't gold in them and um, well you know of course this is now in hindsight but uh, we look back we can see well you know the structural complexity here you essentially have five different um, um, like you know potential candidates and now looking back it looks like that one was probably about a thousand meters off and there's a clear winner here now um, in the, the uh, for the structural candidates of, of what is driving all this gold where this where this gold's moving from and then when we look back and we went and looked back at more historic data compiled more information and found that there was a single drill pad setup built here in 1988 which again they only assayed two percent of the core hasn't been followed up in 33 years um, you know that kind of probably goes into the history of BC in the 1990s with with mining but um, you know some pretty significant numbers 73 grams gold a bit of silver a bit of copper narrow interval but again no shoulder sampling that was really the only part of the hole that was acid and that that was at uh, you know about 72 meters depth so very close to surface so that brings us to looking at the entire fault and a long section which I'm going to scroll down to here um, and importantly you know understanding what was going on back then 
um, in order to confirm what we're seeing now. Um, so looking at the long section here, you can see again this is just a rough um, outline of, of, that, of that approximate historic mineral estimate. Um, that, that was done from the 1980s uh, uh, drilling from that was originally Gulf Minerals who did, who did that drilling um, and you can see go, our golden turbulent of where we've been moving out along the northeast extension over to this area called Goldfish um, and you know we, we think theoretically that'll just continue to you know keep going for of course not an un, unlimited amount of space but a, a fairly significant amount of space um, and then we now move across the valley and this is you know this is who know it's you know unknown at this time if this holds up but just kind of interesting to see that prospective horizon that we've talked about before um where it continues over here and how it lines up with the anomaly but um look at the scale you know that's that's two and a half kilometers on that um on that scale bar here right and then we go and look at the plan view and you know the very first question i had as i was putting this together is well why hasn't this been found before this is a big anomaly um and obviously as, as we've discussed we're not the first people um to to be looking around here you know back in the 1980s uh, this area was first you know discovered so to speak or or an area of interest based on um a i'm gonna go up to a, a larger image of it here but based on out in this area here, the outwash of the glacier, these big massive sulfide boulders that are that are still there, um, that some of them having over 100 grams per ton gold in the uh, in the samples. Now you don't see us advertising that because we're very cautious and making sure that when you know we're discussing. Uh, results that we have that they're in situ results that we know the location of them so just want to emphasize that those boulders are we don't know the exact location where they came from but you could kind of trace them up into coming uh, somewhere up on top of this mountain but they could never find uh, the location for it, where, where they came from the, the in situ source was never found so going back in here and why we think that this is a you know a very strong candidate for being that in situ source of that really high grade mineralization is um you know if we go and look back to so this was i dug this out from a old database that we had um this is a ortho photo from the government of british columbia that was taken in august 1982 uh, conveniently in the satellite imagery that we we're using in here was taken in august of 2018 so exactly 36 years apart and you can see and i've, I've traced it out here i just want to show the image so people could see what it actually looked like but i went and traced it out here this blue outline here represents the approximate outline of an august 1982 our closest image we have of, of the time that people are exploring in here what the extent of the ice and snow cover really was compared to what it is in August 2018 and of course now even less um, here in 2022 so you can start to see that the large majority of this anomaly was completely covered in snow and ice they never would have been able to find it um, you can see the trace of the glacier and where we you know what we call this dispersion train this glacial dispersion train has kicked out the anomaly here again further making this more complicated to identify for for others in the past um, based on the glacier moving the um, uh, you know the indicators around for for lack of a better way of putting it for those that are into um, you know um, a, a great example of, of of that would be you know think of the the diamond fields up in northwest territories and what made uh, diamond so successful was in figuring out how the diamond indicator minerals had been moved around but in the one window where it was exposed sure enough that is where that historic uh, those historic numbers uh, or that historic drill hole came from with that high grade so definitely seems like a, a strong candidate for for the source of that and continuing that out um, in again putting scale into perspective I mean this anomaly is about twice the size of what we've been working with already um, a long strike of each other already with early indications showing that there is you know, that gold has been found in drilling found on surface rock samples on surface of the boulder train so you start to stack the whole thing up and you look at the scale and think okay geez yeah this is what we're looking for this is the the um the changing factor of you know going from like we've talked about in this area before looking for you know or seeing a half million ounce gold quarry versus potentially a multi-million ounce much bigger gold project
All right, everybody. Well, with that, I'm going to leave it there on the McClymont fault for now. Um, we're currently, I'm literally in the field office doing this video here from right now. So things are off to a great start um, for the 2022 season. We're going to have a lot of updates coming out that very shortly. We appreciate everybody's patience with it. I know it's been painfully difficult, but um, you know, one of the most the most important thing I think for Enduro Metals is making sure that we do um, the right job and not the quick job. Um, you know, ultimately exploring up here is, is difficult. This is a difficult place in the world to work, um, but that's, you know, part of the reason why the opportunity is so big. Um, and you know the size of the, the systems you find here um, and the value that, that they end up bringing to shareholders is, is um, there's few places in the world that compared to it. But ultimately, um, these things, you know, quite frankly, what we're looking for would have been found a long time ago if it was easy. So that's kind of, you know, the, uh, the, um, the uh, you know, one of, the, one of the contributing factors to, it takes a long time, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of effort. You know, like you say, we, we see these maps and things and it seems quite simple and straightforward when we see the finished product, but the amount of, uh, data that goes into actually getting to that product um, is uh, not not nearly as straightforward. So again, we appreciate everyone's patience with it. Um, more more property updates in general coming out, but most importantly, um, updates on what's going on for 2022. Um, we're all up here right now, um, battling through what was some early season, um, you know, higher than average snowpack that definitely had things off to a, a challenging start. You know, um, uh, the drill sump, for example, up at Burgundy um, that we had pre-existing, what would usually be exposed by, um, you know, within the last few weeks, had anywhere from seven to 10 feet, or for our European investors, you know, um, two, two to three meters of, of, of snow over top of it. So, you know, all things that you can deal with, but just makes it, um, more difficult than it otherwise would be but uh, things are off to a great start now like I said we're gonna have some some updates coming out very shortly here um, as we as we work on getting a drill turning and and um, we'll get back to you guys then have a good day thanks